add at the top, flat underneath, and that causes the air to move much quicker over the top of the wing, so it gives the aeroplane the lift. But so it can manoeuvre about in the air, it's got various flaps and things. For instance, if we look at the back here, first of all we've got this one, that's the elevator. That causes your aeroplane to go up and down. And just underneath that, you'll see there's the rudder. Now, moving on to the front wings, we've got two items here called ailerons. That's French for little wing. And you'll see, as one of them goes up, the other one goes down and vice versa. They work in conjunction with the rudder to steer the aeroplane and make it bank and do curves and so forth. Finally, we've got these things. <laughs> these are air brakes. And these are helping to stop the aeroplane. Now, that's the sort of controls you'll find on a conventional aircraft. But how do you think this one stays up? Wing Commander Ken Wallace, that is amazing. Anyway, nice to see you back on Earth. <laughs> this is your autogyro. What makes it different from a helicopter? Well, the main difference between a helicopter and an autogyro is quite a big difference, actually, is that the rotors on an autogyro are not driven by the engine at all. They're just gliding down through the air. Just like a sycamore seed, when it falls from the tree, it doesn't have an engine, but it, as you know, it's, it's a little rotary-winged aircraft. Yeah, so what, what is the engine at the back doing then? The engine is actually pushing the thing along. You have to keep going forward to stay up, even mm -hmm. though it may be very slowly. So whereas, of course, hover. a helicopter yeah. can hover. So what's special about the design of your rotor blades? The same section as an aeroplane wing. They're just the same. They work on the same principle. Their speed, really, is the fact that they're going round rather than going forward, as an mm. aeroplane does. Uh, they're very long and thin to be efficient, in yeah. the same way that glider wings are. And, in fact, they're very flexible. And the only strength that they have in flight is from the centrifugal force that's flinging them out. As they're spinning them out around. Stiff. Yes, yeah. that's the way they get their strength. So while the thing was stationary, if our flag you, you, lifted you, one end and you lifted the other end... It would break, oh, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Cool, you've got some up. nerve, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. That's totally all right. It's very strong. How do you steer it when you're in the air, then? Well, you have a rudder pedal like an ordinary aeroplane, and then a control column, again, just like an aeroplane, mm -hmm. and it answers in just the same way. If you want to go up, you move the control column back and the rotors actually come back at a, a, a bigger angle and it climbs. Mm. And uh, if you want to go around to one side, then you move the rotors over and it goes around. Mm. It's all very, it feels very You make natural. it all sound very simple, but I'm sure it takes a bit of knowledge of the air well, and a bit of experience. Yes, it? it flies actually just like a little aeroplane, yeah. except that you can fly much more slowly, of course, and it doesn't stall. Well, well you've told stable. us about it in theory. I think we ought to see the practice again, just to make absolutely certain it <laughs> okay, goes. OK, I'll see if I can remember how to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get out of your way. Great. <laughs> pushing it, it's quite difficult to push out. You can even move the column of air. And the ball is still held in the grip of that fast-moving air. Well, there is a do-it-yourself version, an ordinary home hairdryer. Try it with a ping-pong ball. You can get the same effect by tilting it from one side to the other. And you can even try it with two. Brilliant, brilliant. 
Now, believe it or not, this wonderful machine works on exactly the same principle as a space rocket. What we've got in here, in the red section, is compressed air, and in the yellow section, it's full of water. Now, there's a valve to join the two together, and watch what happens when I open it. Here we go. <laughs> this machine blasts water, but a space rocket blasts hot gas. It works on the same principle. <laughs> Right, well, here's another example of the self-same effect. This is a toy rocket this time. What you need to make it is a pop bottle like that, plastic one, but take the cap off the end just so you've got the rounded bit like that, and a kit of parts. Not terribly complicated, you just assemble them together. When you've done that, you half fill your rocket with water. If I can just show you, underneath at the bottom here, can you see it like there, that's a brass bung. We're gonna start pumping the thing up, and when the pressure gets high enough, the bung sort of releases itself, and you'll see what happens. I'm going to move backwards because uh, I know what happens. There we go. There's the pressure building up. Yes, there it goes. Where is it? <laughs> Superb. They fly for miles, these things. Anyway, I think we've broken something in the background. What you can do is you can make a more controlled set off. Make your own rocket launcher like this. Just a couple of bits of drain pipe and so forth. That's a very smart thing. But it leaves one unanswered question. What actually makes your rocket fly? As you can see, I'm on an exercise bike, but this one's a bit different. It's attached to a propeller. Maria Rodriguez, what's this setup going to show us? OK, before I tell you what it's going to show you, how about if you do some work for me, all yeah. right? I thought and so. <laughs> <laughs> OK, why don't you start pedaling? And turning the propeller. Right, here we go. Great. Let's get up some speed. Oh. <laughs> Pretty good speed there. Oh, that's not bad. OK. Now, let's try something different. OK. Right, try it Do now. the same thing, exactly. Okay. Try it again. All right. Sarah, do you notice? The yellow bars. Yeah. Okay, do you notice they like, standing out? Yeah. That's called the governor. And what it's doing, it's actually tilting the blades so that it resists the air. And even if you pedal much faster, it'll still maintain a constant speed. So all aeroplanes with propellers have that sort of device on them? Yes, there? they do. Of course, differently. They have a hydraulic, hydraulic system. But yes, they do. That way the pilot doesn't need to worry about liftoff or anything. The same speed is maintained. And the engine won't overheat as a result. Exactly. OK, well, I'll have another go, but I think without the governor on. <laughs> <laughs> OK, great. There we go. You think I'll take off now? Oh, I think you're in the air already. <laughs> When they design new aircraft, engineers and mathematicians need to study the flow of air over and under the wing. Now that's quite a tricky thing to do because of course air is invisible and so they have to build very expensive wind tunnels to test that. But there is an easier way of doing it and to care is you use water, don't you? We do. Now here we have a model of a cross section of a wing, like a slice right through it. Yes, a Ex wing going that way. Exactly. Yeah. Now where normally the wing moves and the air is stationary, what we've done is we've changed it and the water is moving and the wing is stationary. But it gives you the same principle in it the It does, yes. it does. Now, when I put my finger in here, you can see that I'm disturbing the surface of the water and you can see the reflection in the bottom of the tank. Yes. Yeah. Now, with this wing, what we're looking for is we're looking for a streamline effect across the top of the wing and the bottom. So the water is going round that side and around that side and it's doing it without making very many shadows on the bottom. That means there's not much disturbance of the water going That's round. Right. Now, if you tilt it, yeah. Okay, we'll see what happens. Right, I turn right, it like that. Now, what can you see happening there? Oh, there is a lot more activity around there, the top of the wing there, and also on the tip of the wing there. And because of all that disturbance, this wing wouldn't fly. That would be rather dangerous then, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Legend has it that Icarus made a pair of wings out of feathers and wax, and when he flew too near the sun, they melted and down he came. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? That's Icarus. That's one of the many kites that's made by Martin Lester, who's with me today. Martin, what makes a kite fly? Well, if I show you on this one, 
All kites need wind to make them fly. Yeah. Uh, and the kite presents this sort of angle to the wind. The wind comes along, it's deflected down underneath the sail, and we end up with a high pressure zone here. Yeah. And on the top surface, we have a low pressure because there's no, no wind blowing past at all. And it literally just sort of sucks the kite up into the air and flies quite steadily. So can you make any shape go up in the air? Within reason, yeah. Um, the kite's got to be symmetrical about a vertical axis. So anything on the left wing must be on the right wing. It must be the same area, the same shape, the same weight, everything. So it's symmetrical about this vertical axis. All right, so you got your kite in the air. What keeps it steady up there? Well, on a kite like this, the two wing spars are at a, a, an angle to each other. It's called a dihedral angle. Basically, the wings are just bent upwards slightly. And this just gives the kite a nice steady, almost like a keel, to fly right. flies very stably. Of course, the more obvious method of making a kite stable <coughs> is to put a tail on it. Now, I have a flat kite here with no tail on it, yep. and it's not going to be <laughs> stable at all. But I can put a tail onto this, and it'll fly nice and steadily. Now, the secret with the tail is not to make it heavy, but is to, to put things on it, little tags, bows, paper cups or something, just to create a lot of drag to make the kite fly steadily. So it just pulls the bottom of the kite away from the wind. If I launch that, you can oh, see, yeah. it's, see it's flying a lot more steadily. When you get your kites in the air, is there much you can do with them, like steering and so forth? With these single string kites, no. But there are some kites with two strings that you can steer around the sky. And a quick step back. Uh, whoops. <laughs> and here you can cool. make it turn and dive, pull out, climb, just by pulling the two strings. Anyway, these are all your very posh, very professional kites. Is this something that the humble amateur such as myself could make? Yeah. We've got a kite here using a couple of garden canes or a piece of dowel, some string, sticky tape, a pair of scissors, and a carrier bag. This one I've got marked out already, and I'll just attack it with a pair of scissors. Just cut the bottom off. Well, that cuts easy. <laughs> nice pair of sharp scissors. While well, you're cutting along here, how can you tell uh, what ratios you're cutting everything in? Well, I marked this out already, but it was marked out to be three units tall. Which is which way? This way. That's tall, yeah. And two units across the centre. Yeah. And then one unit down and one unit out gives you that point where we attach the line. Right, now this bag, because it's a carrier bag, we've cut through both surfaces. We've actually got a spare sail there. We go into this one and we just take the two canes and stick them down. I'm trying to keep the plastic as smooth as possible without too many uh, puckers or tears. In. Right. Because the polythene isn't very strong, we just have to reinforce these top corners where we put the line through. Cut a small hole in each corner, and then we just tie one end through there. Any sort of knot here, a granny knot or a reef knot, tie a couple of times so it's not going to undo itself. Exactly. Most, one of the most important parts, though, is to hold those two corners together. Just pull the string up like that and tie a knot in the centre. And that's ready to fly. That's the most difficult part, and it wasn't too bad. There we go. Whoops. Very, uh, very if you true. find your kite that does whiz round, can you do anything about that? Yeah. The kite like this, fold it in half and just cut some vents in the lower part of the sail. This one, very simple triangular vent. Uh -huh. And it just spills the wind pressure in the lower, lower part of the kite. Right. And it should fly. There we go. Right, well, you've seen Martin do it. Now, what we want you to do is you try and make a kite, but don't stick to those ratios. You can change them a little bit or experiment with different air vents and see what results you get. In fact, you can even try different shapes and sizes of kite. And with a bit of patience and a bit of practice, who knows what you're going to get in the air.
This is a lot of fun. It's a round the pole aircraft, and this is the pole. And the electricity comes up the pole and is fed along this wire to the propeller of the aircraft. Now that's the only control I have over this aircraft. There are no special flaps, no gizmos, nothing. And the more electricity that is fed to the aircraft, the faster, as you can see, the propeller will go. Have a try. You can see as I'm pressing that button, the faster the propeller goes round. Now how much luck do you think I'm going to have controlling an aircraft with only speed? Here we go, set off gently. A little faster. And up into the air it goes. Now if I slow it down a little, that means less electricity. You can hear the note going down and the plane is going a little slower and a little lower faster and it gradually climbs higher why do you think that is why is it that the faster the aircraft goes the higher it goes and it's coming into land this bag is being filled with hot air from this machine and if I let it go you can see it rises. Now, on the end of this string, I've got a balloon filled with helium. Now, the helium in this balloon is at room temperature. It hasn't been heated at all. And when I let it go, it goes straight up. So why does air have to be heated to rise and helium goes straight up without any extra heating at all? <laughs>